Um, so first, could you just tell me what show you went to down to tonight? Went to see the Haunting and Blaine Manor here at uh, the King's Arms in Salford. Lovely. And what did you make of the show? Um, I thought it was fantastic. It was a play within a play within a play. It was um, uh, unexpectedly different and interesting. Is there any particular moment you enjoyed the most? Um, I liked the end of the first act was quite interesting because it kind of turned from being quite pleasant to being quite nasty and scary. The, there was a turning point when one of the characters suddenly turned nasty and uh, I also liked the ending, it was very good as well, it was unexpected. Um, have you seen many, oh, have you seen many sort of horror productions on stage? Um, not very many in the theatre, I'm a huge horror movie fan. Um, I've seen a few, not too many. Um, this, I would say, was one of the best. Is that something you'd like, you would like to see more, sort of horror productions? I would actually, because um, I think this has changed my perception of horror theatre productions in some ways. And so would you recommend going to see this show? Too? Of course I'd recommend coming to see a show like tonight's show, The Haunting of Blaine Manor, because um, it exceeded my expectations and I would, it was creepy. Uh, um, I'm not easily scared. I, I wouldn't say that I was scared, but it was creepy and um, unnerving and I liked that. It was good writing and um, well acted and I, I liked the fact that it was all uh, kind of self-aware in, in a way and um, um, kind of peeled back its own skin to show a monster underneath itself at the end, which was good. Dr. Roy Earl, international investigator <coughs> into reports of paranormal phenomena. Alleged paranormal phenomena. Of course. You're a non-believer. I have yet to find anything authentic, but you have an open mind. Can't you read it, Cairo? No, shut up. Mind you, don't cut yourself. Oh, come, come. I was only teasing. But then you'd know that, wouldn't you? You read minds, Cairo? It's all that are open, yes. Home to suggestion, perhaps. There's no point in attempting the vicinity. Hmm. Although, wait. Yes. Yes, I'm getting something. You're concerned about your scientific equipment, currently lying under 30 feet of still dark and haunted waters. Without it, how on earth are you going to prove that Plain Manor is not the most haunted building in all England? I'm sure this is amusing to you, Carol, but I do need that equipment. Yes, and I'm intrigued to see this equipment. And I'm looking forward to seeing you exposed. Exposed? At a seance this evening. Uh, I won't be conducting the sales. Oh, but I thought you were here to... to catch you out. <laughs> well, it seems Mr. Tyler requires a second opinion to mine. Second opinion? You've already held a seance? Yes. When was this? Last night. I was told you were out today. So was I. Well, it seems I misread the invitation and arrived a day early. Mr. Tyler's curiosity got the better of him, and he asked if I would attempt to contact his spirits. It was quite a night. Oh, I bet it was. I bet you gave him quite the experience, didn't you, Cairo? I don't think I like your tone, Mrs. Rutley. Well, I don't like your tactics. I find you underhand and... Underhand? How oh, dare you! Well, settle down, kids. That's pretty nice. I haven't flown three and a half thousand miles to act as a referee. No, of course. You've come to investigate him. No. I've come to check this building out, Mrs. Rutledge. I never heard of Mr. Cairo until we met about 20 minutes ago. Mm. Don't worry, Mrs. Rutledge. I don't believe in ghosts either. Oh, I believe in ghosts. I just don't believe in Mr. Cairo. Well, Mr. Tyler does, especially after last night. I'd like to work with Mr. Tyler. Where is he? He's uh, staying at the inn in the village. Well, why is he staying here? He lives in London. He inherited his property and considered moving in. However, he finds it disagreeable. He doesn't like staying here. He's trying to sell it, but it has such a reputation that nobody wants to buy it. He had intended to stay here last night, but, well, after all those things that happened, he thought it better to stay at the inn. Better? Shall we say safer? It was rather shaken when he left. 
But what show did you go and see tonight? Uh, the Haunting of Blaine Manor. What did you think? Yeah. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, saw it last year, and this year I just thought they took it to the next level with the lighting, the sound, and the effects. It just really, really, it's a fantastic venue. Just really gave it a, a good feel, real good vibe. What, what, what would you say is your favourite part of the entire production? Um, I like the sort of double twist at the end, to be honest. Because the first time I saw it, I had one thing in mind. Everyone was taking bets downstairs in the bar as to what's going on. And then you get sort of three quarters of the way through and you think you know what's happening and then you don't. Which is just, it's really good. It's got the kind of 1950s um, good sort of film feel to it, but it's got a Britishness as well. And it's also got nods to a few really well known films. Uh, is there a particular character that you, that you love the most? They're all really good. I think, I think possibly Dr. Roy Earl, um, because he's got his own demons. Um, obviously, he's battled the drink, but he's hiding things. But even he isn't what he appears. So I think, I think, the, I think the doctor. Perfect. Um, and would you recommend this show to friends or family? Absolutely. In all seriousness, one of, the, one of the best things. I mean, I've, I've been going to theatre since I was probably three, three years of age. Um, I'm 51. Uh, it's probably the best thing I've seen in 20 years um, from a live production point of view, being right in it. Um, you're in a 1950s drawing room in a haunted house. Doesn't get any better than that. There are no such things as ghosts, Mrs. Burbage. Well, there are strange things going on here. Things that defy explanation, defy logic. Have you ever seen a ghost? No. Well, well I, you want to. That's not what I was going to say. I know. You're going to tell me about something odd that's happened to you. Oh, you're the mind reader now, are you? Whenever I ask that question to people, I even get an affirmative or something close to a ghost story that's happened to you. We all love a good ghost story. But it's a little bit like believing in God. Never a shred of proof. But what if something happens tonight that you can't explain away? What then? That's what you're hoping for. There's a joy in being scared. Thrill. But I'm afraid most feels are cheap. Cheap and false. Being part of this uh, stage fright uh, festival, I've been to see um, The Haunting of Blaine Manor. And ultimately, what did you think? I was very impressed by it. I have to say I wasn't expecting the end at all. I thought it kept you guessing right until the very end um, and it set a really creepy tone I thought consistently throughout, you know, it chilled the blood of most of the people watching. It was really atmospheric and scary. Perfect. So that leads on to my next question really. What, how did it feel to, what's the impact of having the actors right there in front of the audience? There's no like, barriers or there's no like, difference between it. How does that well, it was intense. It was up close and personal. Um, so I think it just added to the fear factor of the overall piece. And was there a particular character that you liked the most? I thought the butler was really good, but they were all brilliant. I mean, they all played a, an absolute blinder on this show. And was there a particular part of the play that you loved the most? Um, well, I thought the first half set it up very well. Um, but then the second half sort of deepened uh, the storyline and uh, explored more of the past and the backstory. And um, yeah, it was very, very effective indeed. And so, would you recommend the Haunting of Blame Manor to anyone? Without hesitation. I'd recommend it to anyone. And uh, I'm so glad to have seen it around this time of year when we're watching uh, spooky films because it absolutely fitted the bill. I saw The Haunting of Blame Manor today. Lovely. And what did you think of it? Um, really good. I didn't think there was going to be as many twists and turns as there was, and there was quite a few. Oh, I just can't even... I'm really gobsmacked. <laughs> Joe's done an amazing job. He writes amazing. He's an amazing playwright. He's very underrated. He really should be out there. He's amazing. So would you recommend the show to... Yes, of course I would recommend this show. Really, really good. Really, really good. And if you could sum up the show in one word, what would it be? It's amazing. It's <laughs> amazing. Awesome. <laughs> and, um, and you, sir. 
What do you do? Well, I guess I'm the flip side of you, buddy. Well, you found proof. I've not been so lucky. I've only found the swindlers, the good talkers, the fakes. Dr. Roy Earl, international investigator into reports of paranormal phenomena. My goodness. I heard of you. Well, at the risk of being rude, I ain't never heard of you. Were you recommended by Cairo? Cairo? The great Cairo, the mind reader. Oh, you read my mind. Oh, he's here. He is. Do you know him? I know of him. I was hoping to one day meet him with a view to doing a chapter on him in my latest book. He once read the mind of Harry S. Truman, you know, simply by shaking his hand. Yeah? How'd that go? He correctly read that Mr. Truman was considering a vacation with his wife in Hawaii at a place called the Brutalman Hotel. Fascinating. Was he president, Tam? Yes, this was a week after he'd been inaugurated. Cairo was touring the States. And he, and he predicted a vacation, yet failed to predict that this man would deliver orders that would kill over a quarter of a million Japanese within months of their discussion. Kind of like seeing the fly on the wall, but missing the elephant that's taking a crap in the corner of the room. <laughs> Don't you think? I think you have a rather robust turn of phrase, Mr. Earl. I saw the haunting of Blaine Manor. Well, I thought it was incredible. Uh, it's the second time I've seen it, and um, I loved it. I loved the reactions of everybody watching it because I knew what was coming, and it still surprised me. I love it. It's great. Spooky, spooky. <laughs> so, who was your favourite character? Spooky, spooky. God, I can't say. I don't think I have a favourite character. Um, well, obviously, I, I love the guy. The the uh, the guy is coming to try and prove it all wrong. Um, but I I really like the uh, butler as well. Um, there was a lot of pulls from different uh, great horror movies in there as well, which everyone a bit of a nod to all those sort of things. You'll see that in the characters, but they were all really good, really really well written as well. Do you think they all worked well? Together. Yeah, they all mesh well, they all work together really well. And it kind of came, you know, towards, you know, with the little twists at the end. And um, yeah, no, they all worked really well together. Yeah, great, great ensemble. Okay. What was your favourite moment of the film? It's the relief, it's the relief at the end with one of the uh, twists um, where everyone goes, oh yeah, oh my god, yeah, yeah, there is, uh, there's still more to come. That's a good one. <laughs> It felt to me like I was watching an old movie, almost in black and white. It felt like it felt like dated. It's, it's a modern play, written about an age that we still want to watch, even though it's written now. It's really well done. Not the golden era. The golden era of movies, but now on stage. <laughs> and would you recommend this show to you? Absolutely. I want to see it again. <laughs> so, for the third time, and I want to see it with all my friends so I can see what they think at the end. It's great. Really good. Definitely recommend it. And sum it on it in one word. Oh God. Oh. Um haunting. I had to consider my expenses. I, I mean I know these are these are tragic circumstances, but this is embarrassing. Please do not be embarrassed. You will all be fully paid what was agreed, of course. Now I can arrange to have all your things moved over to the inn. There are enough free rooms. Now, when we're necessary, I'll stay here. Really? Oh, you couldn't drag me away. And besides, I want to see a scare because this is dirty work. The seance is cancelled. And it shall remain so. Why? As a mark of respect. Oh, come on. You really think old man Tyler's going to mind? I mean, scare might get into the table. You could meet him at last, Mrs. Gundich. That's a dreadful thing to say, Mr. Earl. And I'm sure you're down to show off a few more of your party tricks. This is in very bad taste, Mr. Earl. Says the man who was asking for his money a minute ago. I really don't think it's a good idea to go ahead. There is a storm growing there. And we'll all be bored to death at the end, waiting for it to pass. Come on! 
technical halves, English halves, all the halves, the storm and the sounds, it'd be crazy to cancel it. It's a goddamn movie waiting to happen. So what show did you go and see today? At the Haunting of Blaine Manor. And how, how was the play? How did you? I thought it was absolutely incredible. And it's the second time I've seen it. I don't normally, I'm not a regular theatre goer, but I am a bit of a horror buff. Uh, a film buff in general, but mainly a, a horror film. So my, I'm quite a harsh critic with these kind of things. But yeah, it's the second time I've seen it. It's really good. How did it feel seeing, because there's not many horror theatre productions, how did it feel sort of seeing it live? Yeah, it's really exciting because it starts off as like a bit of a slow burner and you don't expect it to go where it goes in the end. Um, and it was, I felt that impact the second time round as well, probably more so because of the little nods to different horror films as well that you don't always catch the first time round, but this time round I did. Okay, great. Um, was there a particular character you liked? Yeah, Grady. Um, the nod to the, it's a bit of a nod to The Shining. And would you recommend this show to anybody? Absolutely, I'd recommend it to anybody who likes being entertained and, and likes any sort of horrors or thrillers or anything like that. Awesome. So what show did you go and see today? I went, uh, we came to see The Haunting of Blaine Manor. And what did you think of it? I thought it was um, fantastically entertaining, although quite unsettling. Okay. Why was that, do you think? Um, they really managed to conjure up an atmosphere which is difficult, I think, to do horror type well, ghost stories in a live theatre environment because you they've got to be clever. They've got to find ways of um, disquieting you. <laughs> and I was disquieted. Yeah, I felt like their focus, like from a technical point of view as actors, was brilliant because they really had it. Um, yeah, the, and it, it, yeah, it was, you felt in it. I was expecting it. I was, I was waiting for a kind of twist, but I hadn't worked it out. And it was like, it was a double twist as well, which, which is always lovely, isn't it? You think you're there and then the, the floor drops out again and you're somewhere else. So I like that, that was exciting. And um, would you recommend this show to you? Yeah, to everyone. I brought my daughter and she's 17 and she loved it. So I think it's like for all, anyone could come and see this and get something out of it. Perfect. And if you could sum it up in one word, what would it be? Um, spookily mystifying. That's two words. <laughs> well, you're hardly the scarlet woman, but uh, I'd say you find something agreeable in him. There's something very Bogart about him. Oh, you like Bogart? No, I can't abide him. A much more an Errol Flynn kind of girl. Your actions betray you. It wasn't me. This house is playing games with you. She's here. I'm frightened. Do you want to leave? No. I'm having far too much fun. And I wouldn't want to miss out on anything, but I would like to get home at the end of it all. Quite a thrill, isn't it? Being afraid. It's a paradox. Look at what happened to poor Mr. Tyler. That could have been a heart attack. Something tells me you don't believe that. I feel a certain responsibility. Really? Why? Last night, well, I've dealt with Mr. Tyler a while now, and I know he's not really a drinker. Neither am I if it comes down to it. Cairo, though, he can hold his drink all right, and he's very persuasive. I should, I should have stood my ground. Perhaps then things would have turned out differently. Go on. Mr. Tyler had a fear, quite warranted, a foreboding about this house. He wouldn't have been here last night at all had I not informed him Cairo had arrived early then. He felt obliged. And as the wine flowed, Cairo became more and more excited, wanted to try something. He was like a child in a sweet shop. What happened? 
think he woke something. Awesome. So what show did you go and see today? Tonight I came to see The Haunting of Blaine Manor. And what did you think of it? I thought it was great, really enjoyed it. So who would, what was there a particular character that you liked? Loved Vivian. She was so vampish and really um, brought the, the horror genre to life um, in a real Agatha Christie kind of way. So, are you, are you a big fan of horror? Is this quite into um, I'm not necessarily a fan of... I'm a fan of ghost stories. I'm not a fan of go horror. So this was right on my street, yeah. And what did you think of the like the the team of actors as a whole? How do you think they worked well together? I think they were slick, really slick. They worked together really well. Um, they told the story, the twists and turns, the intricacies, and you can see that they've they've really worked well in rehearsal. Perfect. And would you recommend this show to your friends? Massively, highly recommend it. Yeah, to anybody that hasn't seen it, even if you've seen it before, come and see it again. It's a brilliant story, well told. And in one word, how would you sum it up? Spooktacular. <laughs> cool. I'm loving this, everyone's making up their own. <laughs> What's the connection between Fleur Mandalay and here? Oh, my dear, you sit within the walls of that very madhouse. This was a madhouse? I'd argue it still is, and Bedlam must have been forced. No, Bedlam was in London, but they certainly didn't want her there. Perhaps hell was full. Blaine Manor was definitely a more than adequate replacement. They say she'd been here for 27 years when she discovered on one of the walls a pentagram, which she used to summon a demon. That demon in its rage burned the manor to the ground and slaughtered everyone in its path. Uh, how would you sum up this, the overall production of it? In terms of the quality? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a very slick, very well presented show. I enjoyed it. Lovely. What did, what did you think of like, the narrative? Of this? I thought um, it had the feel of um, a slow burning thriller. And uh, I thought it hung together well as a story. And uh, it, it did get me absorbed from the outset, and uh, it generally kept me guessing. I really didn't see the twist coming in the second half, and um, that was certainly the big payoff for me. Perfect. Was there a particular character that you liked? I liked Grady, the uh, butler character. I thought it was very much um, in the mould of the genre, and um, so juxtaposed to all the other characters, and played so deadpan as well. Yeah, very much um, I liked that character. Would you recommend this show to your friends? Yes, uh, yes, I, I really would. <coughs> um, I wouldn't um, necessarily advertise it as um, a horror because um, it came over to me, certainly in the first half, very much in the mould of um, Agatha Christie thrillers. Um, the setup seemed very much like that. And um, without putting in any spoilers, it certainly um, brings in horror elements in the second half. But um, I would say this has much wider appeal than just um, conventional horrors. And I'm speaking as someone brought up on Hammer Horrors. I do like classic 50s, 60s, 70s um, horror films. I know that's um, a lot of influence here. But I think um, the genre overall is much wider than that um, of this particular play. And I certainly wouldn't just bracket just as a horror. Awesome. And if you could sum up the production in one word, what would it be? Um, no gripping. I have absolutely no doubt this place is haunted. I've seen enough already. And the children are delightful. The ancient burnt out church in the ground seems to be a, a psychic hub of sorts. Then there's the powerful source within these walls. Something the children are afraid of. Something very dark and malevolent. Dangerous. It's the commanding influence in the house. Dark, terrible, 